Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to AM Ohm. I'm Z, joined by Sun Yoga Wenlung and our guest today, Diane Erickson, another fabulous local artist who works mainly in textiles. Um, actually wearing one of your pieces today? Did oh my gosh, that? I have a shirt on. <laughs> 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 yes, I did make my shirt. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh-huh. it's beautiful. I took a sewing class once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And the rest is history. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, the so the fabric is <clears throat> awesome, obviously. But I, I actually, I make fabric, but I did not make this fabric. Who made that one? Yeah. Um, it, it's a commercial piece of fabric, but I made the garment and okay. I switch it up a lot. You cool, know, cool. that's kind of what I do. Cool. Yeah, I'm 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 into I'm into textiles and fabric, and for me, the the bigger envelope of of sewing and fabric is creativity and design and how it impacts the way people live in the world. So whenever someone says, "Oh, cool shirt, you sew," I kind of go. Ooh! That piece of me that cringes a little bit because it's it's never about sewing, and that becomes. I do a lot of teaching, and oftentimes in the middle of a workshop, someone will say, "Wow, this isn't about sewing, is it?" Mm. Like, <laughs> no, it's not about sewing. So mm. yeah, so a lot of good good things happening in my yeah. universe. So what is it about if not sewing? Because I thought it was about patterns and. Sewing. You thought it was about sewing. See, I've that, never taken a that, class. I, yeah, you could be. Could be taking a class. Um, to me, the thing that people put their hands on is the opportunity to explore something bigger than that. And so it doesn't really matter what it is. You can tell when someone's deep into something because it doesn't matter whether it's cooking or sewing or you know Tai Chi or whatever it is, when they're deep into that, they're getting everything they need out of that. I love that that concept of do one thing deeply and you will have done all things. Mm. So yeah. what I get excited about as I meet more interesting creative people is um, how are they navigating their world? Mm. And the things you choose to put your hands on are I see as the way that you navigate the world. Mm. So it's it's like your little car you get in. And an interesting thing happens with, with sewers. And over the years, I've been teaching since I was in my early 20s. And interestingly, sewers um, tend to focus on the cool thing they're making or the cool equipment they have. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I've got the best machine. I've got mm-hmm. the this. I've got the that. And once you get really good at something, then then what is it? <laughs> you know. And what I say to people is, Okay, now you you got a handle on the cool equipment. Where do you want to go? Mm. Because what I notice is a lot of times, and maybe true with other technical things that you guys know about, mm-hmm. when people get something awesome like a great machine, they spend all their time focusing on all the different feet, all the cool tricks the machine can do. All the they kind of dive deep into the piece of equipment as opposed to what's my story? What do I want to say? And this is a tool. Mm-hmm. So. I kind of find myself elevating and exploring in my own work the notion of creativity as something you're steering and actively moving around with in the world and how how are you, um, A, making a difference, how are you cultivating um, joy and meaning and um, things in the world that you can bring forward Mm -hmm. because you're in that place. And so when I look at someone and I say, well, that's really cool. You, you're good at a bound buttonhole now. Where do you want to go with that? Mm-hmm. They look at you like, well, I learned the bound buttonhole. Isn't that 
what there was. <laughs> I go, well, not in my universe. <laughs> sure, <laughs> like, for sure. So the yeah. shirt has like bound buttholes yeah. and they're all different fabric, right, to go with. It, you know, It's like, what if you took the thing that you think that's all there was and you spent a big chunk of your life doing it? Like someone who gets good at a brush stroke mm -hmm. or someone who is amazing with making cheesecake or <laughs> what is that thing? And someone who is really deep touching into that um, sort of aquifer, mm -hmm. you can tell that's going on with them because it's not about the thing they're making in the moment because they've got this huge access that they're tapping into. Mm -hmm. And it all comes up all the time, no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I love textile because textile is has really become a medium that continues to have a lot of spaciousness in it. There's a lot of space for me to keep exploring things I want to push, boundaries I find in myself. And it's, it's also allowed me as an artist first, I'm a painter and a drawer and I've come out of that background and graphics and so I have those skills as well. It's mm -hmm. like, hmm, what if I want to make something? And, and we're clearly all influenced by what's around us. My whole family, my heritage is makers. They're all makers. Mm. They're builders, they're makers, they're hands-on, they're textile, they're woodworkers. And so that becomes the normal language in your family. And if you feel part of that, you take that on in your own way, in mm -hmm. your own voice to explore that. So for me, the, the um, spreading out of that hands-on creative experience bring so much more into the mix. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just making I'm not just making a textile, I'm not just making a shirt to wear today. That shirt came from an image I saw, an idea I had, a pattern I drafted, illustrations I drew, directions I wrote, garments I made, variations I made, different ways that you could explore grain and movement and when you take that two-dimensional thing you can draw on a piece of paper, which is what a sewing pattern is, mm -hmm. and you take it into a three-dimensional form and you make it in fabric, then it's moving. How can someone move in this thing? Mm. So there's so many other elements to it. Mm -hmm. And for me, one of the exciting things is um, I do a retreat called Design Outside the Lines, and I've been doing that for a long time, 20, 30 years. And when I now I bring guest teachers in to work with me mm. and I'm intentionally looking for a person to bring in to the situation who isn't my style, mm -hmm. doesn't work the way I work and has a different orientation to their creativity and mm -hmm. their attachment to the technical things we might be doing. So as an example of this kind of spreading everything out bigger, um, I brought a woman who I, I researched and found a woman in Florida who was a professor of architecture. Mm -hmm. And I found out she only got into, she makes incredible fabric pieces, textiles. She only got into textiles like three years earlier in order to explain design concepts to her architecture students. I went, <laughs> let me talk to this woman. Mm -hmm. I want to be talking to her. Yeah. And I got on the phone with her and I went, okay, what I want personally in order to grow my own creativity, I want this reach, I want this stretch, I want this place in the middle where we both kind of come together and go, whoa, what's it about? What's happening? How can we both pull from this interesting place? Mm -hmm. And I knew that she would be a great fit. She would be the kind of person I wanted the participants to be exposed to. I wanted them to see the relationship mm -hmm. and how you could work in a different way, and it also challenged me to create more three-dimensional garments. It's mm -hmm. like, ooh, ooh, I love this. It's like, can I make a house that looks like a building? You know, yeah. it's like, I want that. How can this move and take me off in a different direction? So I feel incredibly blessed to be in the position I'm in, to have the following I have, and to have people interested in growing their work and coming into my circle. And I feel like um, part, of my, part of my creativity is um, teaching. And teaching, I, I, I feel teaching is a high art. 
is one of the highest art forms. And to create situations where you can continually unfold that, explore that, make a difference for other people, empower other people, that's a pretty juicy, that's a pretty juicy place. Mm -hmm. I kind of heard that when I was a teenager. I'd wake up and have these weird dreams. And I had this dream and the voice would say, your job is to empower people into their creativity. And I'd go, whoa, 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 <laughs> hold on a little bit here. That's, I, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just figuring out how to steer my own. You know, yeah, I, right. how can I, they go, don't you worry about that. We'll, we'll take care of that. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll bring you along. You'll have enough life experience when you get down the road a ways, which mm -hmm. clearly happened. Mm -hmm. So well, that goes back to something that you were telling me yesterday <laughs> was that uh, everybody's just making it up as they go along. Mm -hmm. Like even when you're following somebody, the followers are making it up, the leaders making it up. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I found I found that same thing at the recording school I went to. When I went there, and the teachers were teaching knobs and stuff, and I said, "Yeah," I started watching everybody and like, "Well, is that the way to do it?" And they're, "Well, there's really no way to do it. You just," I'm like, "Wait a minute, does, what are you teaching us here?" And I really <laughs> realized that everyone was guessing, yeah. but it was all about effort. Who sat behind the board the most? Who was willing to put 12 hours there and turn knobs sure. and go, that's not right? Yeah. No, or I don't like that. There was no right or wrong is what sure. I really found sure. out. It sure. was, do you like it? Yeah. Uh, mm. Jerry Frimmer is my teacher, I think, said it the best. He said, okay, the mix is done. Do we like it? Sounds good. Could we change it? Yes. Would it make it better or would it just make it different? Uh, and that good was, question. That was good really cool. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, that, that reminds me of something I was, I was talking to someone about the other day. Um, they're an actor and I was mentioning like maybe the first person who broke the fourth wall mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting because when you have confidence about what you do People look at you and they go. Oh, it's supposed to be like that. They were mm -hmm. supposed to do that And so I was imagining the mm -hmm. first person who broke the barrier looking at the people mm -hmm. and I was thinking What if they didn't do it on purpose, but they owned it as if they did yeah. mm -hmm. and they gave people the space to go whoa yeah. You they meant do to do that. And, and you know, I think that's yeah. what a good teacher does, is they create an envelope, they create a space for you to explore, fall down, figure it out, and to trust, and to keep going. Mm. You know, a good teacher creates that opportunity, mm. you know, for each one of us. And, I mean, look at the handful of teachers you could say in your life um, made a difference, and we've all got a short list. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's a short list for most of us. Mm -hmm. um, Mine, mine's a pretty big list. Yours is a big I've had some really good teachers. Big old list. <laughs> She's been teaching me for a long time. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just going to say, just in case you don't know, this is actually my mom. Yeah. Just in case. We weren't sure when that, that was going to happen. <laughs> that was my opportunity. Thank you for the envelope to say that. Okay. 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 You're welcome. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I think the whole... The bigger conversation of creativity is about parenting, is about, mm -hmm. it's, it, the most exciting thing to me is in conversations with people around art, making art and being creative and having a, a craft or something you learn to do, what I, what I love about getting people to explore this bigger envelope is the understanding that art is not you know, creativity and art is not something you do on Saturday when you take out your project. Creativity is the lens that you're wearing all the time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on you. It's the lens to, in which you view the world. Mm -hmm. That's big. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether you're a mixer or a baker or a, you know, a, a, a poet or a painter. Mm -hmm. It's the lens you're wearing. Mm -hmm. It's it's closer to you, it's more intimate to you than just, oh, I'm gonna paint a picture over here. Or I'm gonna make a shirt over here. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that conversation, that it, it grows us to have that bigger conversation with who we are when we bounce up against stuff. You, you can't just sit around and go, yeah, I'm having the most amazing creative life and I'll just sit here on a mountain by myself. <laughs> There's a hands-on component for a lot of us to exploring that. I can't even talk without my hands. Yeah. <laughs> there is that hands-on component to um, what is that about? How am I doing that? How am I growing that? How am I getting better at that? Mm -hmm. I mean, when you watch a child, you know, I've, one of the things I've noticed in teaching that has been a draw for me is 
and exploring my own creativity has been teaching almost every age group that we hit. So mm. I, um, I taught high school. I taught um, handicapped adults in a summer camp program. Mm. I've taught kids. I've taught little kids. I've, um, I've taught um, older adults. I've mm. worked in a rehab program for people who've had different kind of physical injuries and strokes. And I was the person who had a closet full of oddball things. And they'd say, this was before art therapy came mm. along. People would say, the OT, the PT, the speech people would say, okay, here's the deal on this person. We need to work this. We've got this. We've got this. And I'd sit there and go, huh. <laughs> what have I got in that closet that I can get that person to put their hands on that will help facilitate all that stuff? Fine motor, gross motor, you know, hearing impaired, visually impaired, all of that stuff. Mm. And that, that is a huge piece of, my, of meaning for me in creativity and hands-on process. I mean, I can make a lot of cool stuff, but I demand magic and I demand meaning, and oh. I demand those things to deepen. Hmm. Not, it's too important mm -hmm. to not demand more, no matter what, you, what you're doing. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. I, it's I, a ladder, like your earrings. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've constantly said something similar to people as um, a friend of ours, Jasmine Thomas, um, constantly said, I don't have an art. My friends are musicians. My friends are artists and I don't do anything. And I've seen her in tears for hours. I don't do anything. And mm -hmm. she made me, and I want to debate her. And I'm like, what, how do I get there with her? And I'm like, just being a human, that lens you're talking about is mm -hmm. art. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to paint to be an artist. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do mm -hmm. a physical thing to realize that lens mm -hmm. is still, you're still wearing yeah. it, but you have to see it as such. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I'm not I would say we're not really taught that as um, no. in, in the Western culture, at least that, no. hey, just you being you is yeah. an art form. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that um, yeah. is something that we, you yeah. know, yeah. can embrace more if we're knowing that that's yeah. possible. Yeah. Well, and what you speak to is the you know, there's, there's power in arrangement. Like she gets up every day, she puts something on. Mm -hmm. She decides what she's going to eat when mm -hmm. she looks in the refrigerator. That's what I'm talking she about. lays stuff out. Yep. Um, one of the things I do in the wintertime especially is I go out and I, I like to bring fresh green stuff into my studio. And I love to make little oddball flower arrangements. Well, I know what ikebana is. I you know, had friends who studied traditional Japanese arranging and have really... But I can do arrangement. We can all do arrangement. Mm -hmm. We just have to trust we have that in us. Mm -hmm. We have this sense of placement. Mm -hmm. And... What I'm always struck with is I can go out and walk the alleys in Ashland in the winter with my little pruners, and I always take like, oh, that would be better. Cars could go by here if I'd clip that one off, you mm -hmm. know. So I'd prune a bunch of things, and I bring them in. It's not about having flowers. It's not about having the right vase. It's not, and I can do a really cool arrangement with you know sticks and greens and mm -hmm. stuff that smells good mm -hmm. that makes me feel good that initiates my space and starts my day. Wow. And so just that process of, of arrangement, you know, it brings us to the bigger question of what creates beauty. Mm -hmm. Think about it. I mean, that pulls something up for each person. Beauty. Yeah. The concept itself. And, yeah. Yeah. and you guys are not emphasizing the results. No. You're all emphasizing... Bingo. The journey. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Which... Yeah. That's yeah. not something that you learn yeah. at PS yeah. 118. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think that's part of the reason what you just said, Zach. Um, the process is part of the reason for this whole flood of book now, books now around slow making, slow meaning, slow stitching, mm -hmm. slow. It's like slow down, mm -hmm. make it last, watch what you're doing, spend more time, and people are triggered by amazing things that have happened in other cultures for long periods of time. In Japan, there are people who make these awesome, amazing, beautiful uh, painted kimonos who would work on the same kimono for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 25 years on that kimono. That changes you when you're not going to just make, make a jacket in a day. Yeah. 
You know, mm-hmm. that's we live in the make it and make a jacket in a day culture. Make three because you got to sell three. it. Make <laughs> three. Yeah. <laughs> you know, make three. Yeah. That changes everything. Mm-hmm. And we're we're <clears throat> working at trying to get there. We're working at paying attention more and slowing it more. But look at how technology takes us into this, speed it up, speed right. it up, speed it up. People are only going to pay attention for a short period of time. So don't give them too much. Yeah. Everything has changed. Mm. You know, pattern directions have changed. I write for a couple of magazines and one of the things I've gotten, and I've done this over time for the last 30 years written for magazines, one of the things that I got from the editors, the last time I was going to do an article was, we need to edit this down because people aren't going to pay attention. <laughs> they can't read it that long. Mm-hmm. You need to write this really direct and really short because we need it to be more like social media. We need it to be a bite. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. that is changing everything. So are we the ones to hold on and say, wait a minute, because we do remember that essence? Yes, we are. That's what I believe, too. That's what I've always felt, Mm -hmm. that we're here to, Mm -hmm. um, no matter what is changing around us, if you have been blessed to have learned the old ways or the the way, then hold let them uh, teach them to the younger generations yes. to pass them on so they still exist yes because once the last person yes. doesn't remember then it doesn't yeah. exist yeah. anymore we might be the yeah. last people who sat in someone's lap and actually had the physical book read mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. whereas now it's like give them a give them some screen time over yeah. here yeah so we need to keep that alive Tra- those traditions those traditions sure. alive and even if you don't think of yourself in that generation, you realize, wow, I am in that generation mm-hmm. now. Time is moving on, and what, what do I need to bring forward? Mm-hmm. What is my gift, and how do I bring it forward? And yeah. I think that's part of what drives you know, our creative process at, at lots of levels. One of the things I really enjoyed, as I say that, I'm thinking about when the, um, Miles and his sister were little, we would spread out big pieces of paper on the floor and have a basket with stuff that would make a mark. And we'd all lay on the floor and draw on some part of the paper and talk about stuff. And, and then the other piece that I folded into this, which I feel it was incredibly important because Miles has always had this access to his creativity and willingness and comfort and playfulness about that his sister never saw herself quite that way Mm. you know she was you know there was a comparison going on and she was not the artist miles was the artist Mm. so in the course of doing these big pieces of paper everybody would draw and then we would turn the paper and you'd keep drawing (laughs) the rule was you couldn't cross out anything anyone else did Mm -hmm. but you could work around it or into it Mm -hmm. but you were not allowed to cross anything out so we just keep turning the paper and as the overseer I'd I'd keep turning the paper until I saw there was a nice amount of stuff on it and then we would put it up and then everyone got a piece of the success it Mm. wasn't like you put your picture up next to Miles let's see how good he is next to you and then it wasn't this it was about community Mm. right away (laughs) And the cool thing was we'd put it up and it's like, oh my gosh, look at that. There's your, remember when you put that in that little mm-hmm. bug, you put it in the piper, we'd do lots of flowers, you know, mm-hmm. I was like, there's that flower you did. Look at how we attached that over here. How, who did that? Oh, you put that car in there. That's really cool. Look at the way it drives right over there. Mm-hmm. So it, it gave us all level ground. It wow. gave us all access and it gave us all success in the experience. And I think the way that you bring that in, whether you're working with um, someone who's really little or someone, I just think we all had the opportunity to show up with that, even if we don't think we're the artists. Mm -hmm. That's a really great thing to do with, uh, you know, with kids. And it passed on to him because watching Mm -hmm. him do his art now, he constantly does (laughs) Uh the the twist. And I see people like, what are you doing? You're you're moving your... (laughs) But that's a a technique that he utilizes in his paintings was, well, now I'm going to turn it Mm -hmm. and paint this way and I'm going to turn it again. Uh And then at Uh the end, even when he's finished, you know, well, what's it, what is it this way? I remember sitting a couple paintings we put over here, we'd sit on the couch and then he'd look at it and go and turn it over. Oh, look at it that way. Yeah. You know, that's... 
Yeah. It's, it's like, like everything's a, a yeah, <laughs> like life. Yeah, exactly. Well, and everything's a celebration. It's like who you are, who you show up as as a teacher or a parent, you know, that all becomes a gift and part of the mix. I'm the only left-handed person in my family. Mm. Well, that becomes I mean, growing up, I was the only left-handed person in my family. And now it, it was like, th there was all, all those comments at that time were like, well, can't we get her to change? What's mm. wrong with her? Why do you do it that way? You know, people try to teach you how to write who have no business teaching a left-handed person how to write because mm. they want you to do weird things with your hand, which don't work, by uh -huh. the way. And it's like, if someone just said, if that wasn't so such a loaded thing, and historically, it's like it had a whole lot more yeah. issue attached to it. Oh, yeah. But, like, you know, it's like trade-off. You, you got two different ways of working. You know, when Miles had some issues with his arm and couldn't work with his right hand, it was like trade-off. The left one's working really great for me. You know, it's mm -hmm. like trade-off. You got two sides mm -hmm. accessing two different parts of your brain. Um, when you work with your left hand, it's a much more intuitive. It's accessing that more mm -hmm. intuitive side of your brain where you work with your right hand your left brain is the more um systematic mm -hmm. um it, it's about how it looks does it look right am i doing it right is it it's mm -hmm. more lined up and the other side is totally about the feeling this flow flow My so you know we both we've all got that all the time but to be able to share where you're coming from whether it's you know you notice here's a difference in me i can offer this out to you how does that work over there? I think that's a celebration. My friend Eddie Garcia, um, the artist that I grew up with a lot, my mom's best friend, painter, mm -hmm. friend and stuff, um, we would do this, uh, we had a little crew called Left Handed Circle because he was right-handed too, and we would draw yeah. with our left hands and try to draw circles left-handed and different things. <laughs> and then my great-grandfather who built houses... Um, my dad said he was completely ambidextrous. Mm -hmm. He could line up nails on a roof and literally just go bang, 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 and just go down roofs wow. and just nice. and one wow. hit, That's one gangster. hit on each one. <clears throat> and so, you know, um, wow. Growing up, I juggle turntables were my first instrument, yeah. both hands, and I didn't know that what I was doing uh -huh. more. And um, with turntables, you can choose either side. You know, when you're scratching, uh -huh. and I always wondered, well, am I better at this one? Am I better at this one? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I don't know. And I chose to go with the right hand on the fader to be technical uh -huh. and my left hand to be on the record to be flow. Interesting. Because that's how I picked it. I said, well, this will be the, the flow and this should be the technical aspect. Wow. And that's how I decided it for that same wow. kind of yeah. thinking, I think. I think we're much more balanced. And, you know, really, honestly, left-handed people are more balanced because you have to be both hands. You, mm. We're living in a right hand. The world is set up for right-handed people. Mm -hmm. And if you're right-handed, you don't have to be left-handed. But if you're left-handed, you have to be right-handed. Mm, you have to be both. That way, yeah. Interestingly, and I don't know if there's a lot of these around now, but there used to be like, oh, it's the left-handed store. We don't, we'd go to some place like Carmel, and they'd go, oh, look, there's a left-handed store. Diane, let's go in. I'd go... I don't need to see what everybody thinks is a problem with left-handed people. You go ahead. Have a good time in the left-handed store. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but that, that distinction and that separating um, is not of a benefit to us. Uh, it comes, I, I believe, from some of the study, and I, I can see how it comes from some of the spiritual lineages because they call it the left-handed path, you know, <laughs> Yes. Um, which is uh, the ego path or so. They would mm -hmm. say in the spiritual realm. And when I say ego, uh, mm -hmm. the word ego originally meant soul contact. Mm -hmm. And then when mm -hmm. uh, the psychologist took over the word ego, it became a negative thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Um, but it was the idea of the left-handed path and speaking of... Mm -hmm. um, the awkwardness of the left-handers, you know, that, uh -huh. that what their mission is to learn in here. So I've read uh -huh. some stuff on that. Yeah. So I think... And I'd heard stories about... Um, even in America, them taking left-handers and making them right, right-handed. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. and you, yeah. Which I really kind of put into the whole, as a young kid as well, the whole men don't cry. Yes. Women can't do this. Sure. Um, teaching people not to be left-handed. It was just huge, oh, yeah. like, making society a certain yeah. way so that yeah. we would be a certain way, easier to control, yeah. easier that, to understand yeah. what they're going to do Let's because get we've it got together. them in a box. Let's get it Well, and that's one of the teaching models. There's two mm -hmm. teaching models uh, that I've heard, which is one of them you... you you tell them what is right and wrong, and then you enforce it. And then the other one, you you allow them to find and you nurture. Mm. And mm -hmm. this this mm -hmm. is that openness, that trust, mm -hmm. that which hand is spinning the fader, which way does the painting go? Mm -hmm. Because how how would society know what your kid is going to do? 
when mm -hmm. your kid might not even know yet. Yeah. You know, sure. let them find it and then nurture it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love how everything we're talking about feels connected. Yeah. And because I think yeah. that's speaking to what we've all been talking mm -hmm. about, which is it's not so much what it is, it's how we do it. Oh, it's totally how and you do it. That, yeah. that is the huge thing that I'm learning now to disattach from the um, outcome. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, if I throw a show, don't worry about how many people show yes. up. Do it, just do that, and yes. that's what, it, and the rest yeah. will handle yeah, yeah. itself and yeah. fall into place. And that's been a big lesson for me. Yeah. I, I I feel like that's that's really right on the mark. That's that's where the meaning comes from. Mm -hmm. The meaning doesn't come. It's like the thing the thing that happens when you make. If you make something, the thing is the result of what happened. Mm. It's just the result. It's not, it's not anything all by itself. Mm -hmm. You got over there somehow. And to grow your work, you have to grow the space in between the inspiration and the making. That's, that's the stretch. That's the mm -hmm. place right there. So it doesn't matter. What I get off on is taking, taking this idea of how people grow and, and expand and work into what's next for them out of the context of a specific thing you're doing. Because mm -hmm. once you take the sewing, the fabric, the garment, the welded piece, the, you know, the cooked loaf of bread, when you take the thing you're making out of it and you just edit it down to pure process and you look at how people engage and problem solve, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things that I have enjoyed over the years, I've traveled a lot in my work, and one of the things that I've, uh, on, a, on an airplane ride, when I sit down as some, next to someone, I never ask someone what they do. <laughs> I only ask them, what's the most creative thing about what you do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How now, many people are confused by your question? Well, interestingly, peop, a lot of people smile. And a lot of, you know, sometimes that's a 10-minute polite conversation. And sometimes that's a five-hour all the way across yeah. the country conversation. Yeah. And sometimes people tell me what they do. I never ask. And sometimes people never tell me what they do. Mm, that's cool. And it's mm. the most interesting opening I have found. And what I realize is look at the potential of a question, whether you're asking yourself like when I explore my creativity, I am, I'm asking myself a question. I'm exploring a question. I'm exploring a dynamic between what's going to happen, how could this. I'm, I'm being an inventor. Mm -hmm. I'm mixing stuff together to see what will happen. Mm -hmm. But in that process of asking the question, so much, it, it's so much about that. It's so much about that. Look, mm -hmm. look what will come out of people if you have the right question to ask. If you ask a question that's not loaded, not jaded, not... I mean, we all pick all of it up. If you mm -hmm. can really ask an open-ended, inquisitive question from a place of engagement and wanting to connect with another human in a really positive way, mm -hmm. amazing things happen. It mm -hmm. changes people. It changes people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is such a gift to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so however, you know, it's like everyone's navigating. And I mentioned that sewing can be like a little car you could get in and drive around. So if we're, if we're in our little creativity cars driving around, it's like, what are we doing with that? How are we, you know, who's getting into the car? Where are we going? How are we, you know, what's happening there that, can make that conversation bigger? How can you get everything you need out of the life that you're leading and how can you grow the life that you're leading and the people around you are leading? Well, they're affected by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I've constantly said, um, performing, when we perform, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I performed last night, it's 25 minutes, but in between performances is 25 days. Mm -hmm. And I've learned the most important aspect yes. of the performance is what are you doing for those 25 days yes. will power you for that 25 minutes. Yes. And people go, oh, the, the show yes. is the most important. I said, yeah. no, because if you're not feeding yourself up to that moment, you could get up there mm -hmm. and have nothing to say. You know, mm -hmm. really, you, know, you think mm -hmm. you do, but is there anything, is it, mm -hmm. is it tangible um, behind it? You know, the substance sure. packed. Yeah. I found that by being an improver, freestyling, uh -huh. and, and thinking, oh, I've, I can just freestyle. Uh -huh. I can improv uh -huh. anything. I get on stage. Uh -huh. And I got up one night to rap, and I went, what am I going to rap about tonight? You know, I had, I had lost the connection <laughs> yeah. to 
uh, being mm -hmm. inspired to, oh, I can't wait till that show because I've mm -hmm. had all these great conversations. And I started realizing mm -hmm. with all the conversations I'd have with people, when I'd start pulling out lines they'd say while I'm freestyling sure. and topics, and I'd go, I'm being fed yes. by the, my conversations, and then it is my job to get mm -hmm. up there and um, bring them back out sure. for people, all the people I get to talk to and the experiences mm -hmm. I had. And that mm -hmm. was part of my job as a, um, yeah. as a musician and MC. Oh, yeah. And you guys create this amazing container. Mm -hmm. And that container is a highly creative opportunity every single time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I hear, you know, I hear snippets from Miles about how these things are going and mm -hmm. what's happening and who's coming. And it's like, oh, what about that? What about that? It's like you're creating a space. People come in. What is possible? Amazing things are always possible. We see it all the time. I'm just like, I'm stoked about that. Mm -hmm. Like you get a bunch of people yeah. in a room. It's like people don't realize they're paying me to come to a class and they're showing up in my lab. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know what I will do when someone shows up and the interaction that will happen and where they are and where they could go. I'm, I'm working it. Mm -hmm. I'm working it. I'm exploring how I'm going to come out at that and how I can make something happen in that space. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going, oh, great, you paid me now. Here's the thing. You know, mm -hmm. let's do it. It's like, Wow. Thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. You know? Like Cracker Jack last night. Young man performed for the very first time. How old is he? 20, 21? At least 21. Yeah. First time ever on oh. a mic. And wow. Uh, his lyrics were just crazy good. And um, we... Yeah. And what a gift to him. Oh, yeah. To be in the space and be invited to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's the blessing that I realized of throwing shows. There's a lot of stress of doing mm -hmm. these things and sometimes I ask myself do I really want to still do these and yes you know but I, mm -hmm. I feel like this is what I'm being asked to do this is mm -hmm. a, a something it's a blessing it's the mm -hmm. burden me more blessing uh, mm -hmm. that I can create a container to allow people to have an outlet yes. to express themselves yes. so I I've constantly um you know I'm the kind of person I'll be outside of a show I'm throwing and someone come hey can I rap tonight and I'll be like you know, well, can you, you know, and then maybe they'll, <laughs> maybe they'll, they'll spit something and I'll go, okay. And then I'll put them on. I've had people say, oh, don't do that. They might not be that good. Or you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I said, I said, but we don't know, do we? No. So who, how many chances would we just love an opportunity? And that was us. And, and that was us, right? I just need one person put me on. Can I just get a chance? And so yeah. I know someone did it, but I'll say, I don't feel like it happened much. So I started doing it for other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'll be that person to say, yeah. I'll let you do, try, and, and whatever happens, happens, and yeah. we'll be okay. I'm yeah. pretty sure we'll yeah. all be fine, even yeah. if the person got yeah. there. Like, and the first time I rapped, I lost my voice. Mm -hmm. it, it, I almost started crying, yeah. you know, in front yeah. of people. I, I was so nervous. I thought I could do this. And, there was, <sighs> and you got up there. And, yeah. and, you know, and it's just that I had the chance. People gave you space. Yeah. And, that, and now, wow. 23 years later, I'm continuously doing the same things for other people, mm -hmm. but, and, it's, and it's for them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. in no way am I going away like, oh, I mm -hmm. did that for Cracker Jack. It's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about yeah. Cracker Jack coming up afterwards, just going, thank yeah. you so mm -hmm. much. And Cracker Jack's friends, yes. seeing his mm -hmm. friends yes. film him and going, oh, you know, he's doing something. And yeah. it was beautiful last night to see that. And we noticed that he had written a few songs, knew, had them memorized, and they were really on some nice uplifting kind of lyrics and wow. things that when he was freestyling... Mm -hmm. um, you know, we imitate a lot, obviously, and mm -hmm. I know when I started rapping, when I was first rapping, it was very imitation. I wasn't mm -hmm. killing people mm -hmm. or these That's things. That's a way to learn. Right? It's, it's always totally imitation. And what I watched was he had heard how we rapped and what the vibe was. He had his style, and he adapted. He came to say, well, mm -hmm. like, can I write on these topics? Can I write about mm -hmm. uplifting things? And he mm -hmm. came with some beautiful conscious lyrics, and, and Zach... You were asking about that at work. Like, yeah, I want to hear what he's saying. I mm -hmm. wonder if we'll be able to hear mm -hmm. his lyrics. He raps really fast when he freestyles yeah. and stuff, so you don't wow. really pick up every lyric. Really wow. fast. Did you wow. felt you heard that last night? Yeah, for his first few songs. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And yeah, and the message was really <laughs> positive and uplifting, and I was not expecting that yeah. from someone so young. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you heard you heard that you you created a platform. You're holding your energy up to do what you do. And there's enough of it that you can create a platform for something else to happen. Mm -hmm. And that happens no matter what we're doing. I mean, think about people who are deep into baking and, you know, making food and making food for other people. At some point, 
they're not just getting good at making food. They're looking at how can I make food to make a difference? Mm -hmm. So then they're opening soup kitchens. They're bringing kids in mm. who are at risk to learn how to make, you know, some, I'm going off on something I saw on a, a program where they brought kids into a kitchen and they hired them to make candy or learn this process and to sell it and create their own business. And yeah. These were at risk. It's like all of a sudden this thing I love to do has this potential to move a lot of people forward. Mm. And, you know, I think that's another layer of creativity. It's like once you learn how to steer your own, I think a lot of, a lot of us spend a good part of our lives figuring out how to steer our own. And I always say whenever you come into it, it's the right time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard people 20 years old say, I wish I'd done this sooner. And I'd heard people who are 60 years old say, I wish I'd done this sooner. <laughs> and people who are, you know, 40 years old say, it's like, okay, it's yeah. perfect right now. Yeah. It's perfect mm -hmm. right now. But what I notice is whenever that is that you pop in and you're ready, then you have enough energy to steer it in different directions. And for me in... You know, you wake up and you say, what can I do to make a difference? What can I do with what my tools are? What do I have to offer? Mm -hmm. I mean, and how can I step out with this? And one of the things that I personally do um, and have done over the last 20 years is every once in a while, my radar picks up on someone and I trust my gut and I know I need to offer to make them something. Mm. You know, I might give you something. I might sell you something, mm -hmm. but mostly I would teach you something in yourself rather than just sell you a thing. Mm -hmm. So mostly my work doesn't revolve around making stuff to sell. And, but I pay attention and maybe, over, maybe eight or nine people now mm -hmm. have come onto my radar with really intense life situations. And I look at that person and I go, I think I need to offer something here. Mm. And I contact that person and I say, would you like, could I, could I make you something to wear? Would you like something out of this thing that's important to you? Or, you know, I've, I've, I've made things for people who are dying, who had a special piece of fabric. Mm. I've made, uh, you know, I jump in in situations where it's, there's a risk. It's deep. It's, emotional it's mm. it's edgy and i want to i want to show up there because i can i can hear it and so just and so as an example um this last couple of years i've made and i just and i tend to do this in the winter for some reason when i'm sort of mulching you know stuff and um i made uh i made a, a garment for a woman who is spearheading a national um, uh, movement against gun violence. Mm. And um, she is spearheading the Vision Quilt Project, and she is tireless, and she has gotten, you know, almost all the states involved and, and you know, people at the top and, you know, marches in D.C. And, mm. and all over the country. And... You know, I looked at her, and she had T-shirts made, and I looked at her in the T-shirt, and I went, oh, no, 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 no. She needs something cool to wear. Mm. This is, that is not okay. She is not going to look like, It's not going to pull that power that you, yeah. I know, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And so I made her a garment. Mm. And I used a combination of materials, and some of the fat was a knit piece, and I used the T-shirt and the logos mm -hmm. in the garment, mm -hmm. and I used some fabric that actually looked like it had like worn holes in it, possibly like bullet holes, mm. possibly, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And ever since she has had that garment, I, I keep, <laughs> she keeps going, Diane, you're not going to believe this. I, this happened, this, I said, this garment... People pay attention to me. People stop me in the street. People come up to me. At the fundraiser I was just at, a woman came over to me and she said, I've looked at you four times in that garment. Here's my check for $500. <laughs> she goes, this is like, and I said, good. I said, that's what was supposed to happen. Right, yeah. It was supposed to bring people giving attention to you. It was supposed to bring attention. 
And th that's a whole other layer of awesome power mm -hmm. that each of us has in our own place with whatever that is. And for me, thinking, you know, something to wear, how important is that? Well, maybe to some people it is. And I know, you know, processing my own life experiences, I've made um, things to wear that have had particularly powerful meaning. Um, when, you know, the kids were little, we went through a flood, we lost all our belongings in our car, and I saved a, a, a basket of stuff that had been stained in the flood. Everything bleeds. It's a, it's a pretty gnarly experience. And I saved some pieces of fabric that had bled onto other pieces of fabric, and I made what I got married in out of those fabrics. Mm. And the universe said, when I went, oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? The universe said, you know you always have what you need. Mm. And I made an amazing thing to wear. Mm. And it was palpable. And it was like taking the energy from one of the most difficult days of my life and transforming it into something I could put on my person mm -hmm. and wear on one of the other most amazing mm -hmm. days of my life was like, it doesn't get any better than that. Oh, right. That is sort of it. It's like, you want to <laughs> see a boundary? You want to see a boundary? That's a boundary mm -hmm. right there. It's like when you can pass that up and take it somewhere else and change it into something else, that is, that is magic. When you can do that, you can do anything. Transcendence. That's it. Alchemy. That's it. The alchemy. Yeah. 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 And Beautiful. we could all have that story in our own oh, particulars. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. in our own stuff. The Rumi quote about the wound is where the light gets in. Yes. You know, mm. it's the Leonard Cohen song. Yes. You know, forget your perfect offering. There's a crack. There's a crack in everything. Yes. That's where the light gets yeah. in. And don't you love, related to that, the Japanese concept of kintsugi, which is the concept where they repair broken ceramic with gold and and the, and the concept of it's more beautiful and more mm -hmm. valuable repaired than it was in the beginning. Wow. And that is something wow. I've totally playing with this year in my work mm -hmm. after um, you know as a metaphor for other powerful things moving in the world mm -hmm. is how can I explore that putting things back together using things that have richness but maybe have gone through something. How can I transform that now? Mm -hmm. And those experiences travel with us, just like those experiences when you got held up travel with us. Mm -hmm. All those moments when someone held us up or gave us an opportunity or said we did a good job, whatever that was, those things are still tracking and still with us, and we can keep attaching things to that. Mm -hmm. And part of that is circling it around and, and attaching it for someone else, making it available to someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I found my, I, I loved working with the Waldorf kids at the, at the Waldorf school um, when I first moved here for two or three years, and it was like, I'm in the middle of it going, well, okay. Let's go. What are we going to do? <laughs> and one of the things I noticed was um, whatever situation you put yourself in, it's such an opportunity to pull all those tools up in a different way. It's like, okay, what can we make here? What can we do here? It's like, mm -hmm. what have we got? What do we got? And I set up, um, I know how to do most of the hands-on different methods for making, you know, weaving and basketry and metal and ceramics and all of these things are things that I've played with over the years. So I set up a warp-weighted loom. We The kids made the loom with big sandbags at the bottom. They ran out. I made, they, they filled the bags with the sand. They brought them back in. I showed them how to make a warp-weighted loom that we put on pulleys, because they were little people, held it at the ceiling, and we could we could raise it and lower it as they got the weaving progressed and we needed to move it down so they could get to the top of the weaving. And the weaving became like a community draw. I mean, those kids would show up every day for things to put in the weaving. Mm. And first of all, it was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with the weaving? I showed them how to weave and some of them got it right away. 
Some of them couldn't get the back and forth because, of course, we're all at different learning curves. Right. And so then I got a chance to say to the kid who got it right away, you know, Justin, you're really good at that sumac stitch. Before I come back next week, I'd like you to teach three other people how to do that. That's right. So it became a, a way for me. It became like this fabulous, mulching, big space for all that to happen. Mm. So then it was like, what are we going to weave? Are we going to weave a picture? Are we going to weave this? And then we decided to weave the hills on the other side of the mountain and put some things in there. And I went in the next day, and there was... The next time I came in, there were like little balls of like f fiber in there, like little sheep thread, you know, hair in there. And a kid came running up to me with his big wad of sheep hair and he goes, I made sheep, smell, smell, it's the sheep in the, in the weave. It's like, okay, good, there's sheep in the weaving now. But the coolest thing that happened was we had a big tree in the middle of the weaving. And some people were good at different parts and we were kind of navigating all of that. And then I come back and Three of the boys have decided, well, there's a hole there, and we're just going to fill that in. I go, hold, hold, hold on a second. It was like a hole next to the tree. I said, hold on a second. A, how do we know something isn't living behind there? And B, I think we should talk to everybody about, let's get up, let's see who else wants to fill it in. Let's, oh no, we've decided. I'm thinking, oh, this is so dude. It's just <laughs> like a bunch of dudes, right? <laughs> go, okay, okay, well, that's one idea but let's see how everybody else feels about filling it in. So we got to have all it, and, and they were like so into this weaving. Um, we got to have this conversation about how is that gonna, how are we gonna do this? It's like, well, how does everybody, you, you guys all fan out, see how everybody feels about it, and let's make a group decision about whether we wanna fill it in. Mm -hmm. And so it became this community project. We finished the weaving, they hung it in their space, and when they had their graduation, they figured out a way that they could keep using their weaving, which everyone was a part of. They made leaves, and every kid had their name on a leaf, and they had two leaves. They had one to wear, and then they put one leaf on the tree mm -hmm. because the weaving was now going to stay in the studio, in the school. Wow. It was like, oh my gosh, it doesn't get any better than that. Mm -hmm. How can we all do this? Mm. You know, How can each one of us do this? Yeah, I make clothes, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's other things that could be going on. <laughs> For sure, there's more to the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, well, yeah. <laughs> that's all the time we have today. Um, God, we covered so much. I don't know how to wrap it all up in one statement. Uh, go, go out and fill some cracks with gold. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like oh yeah. Mm. Isn't that a great metaphor? <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank yeah. really you, Diane. Uh, Diane Erickson. Thank you for sharing, great. for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, this has been a beautiful experience, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and uh, we wish to continue to share this with people. The process, which we really spoke on, was um, don't be worried about the outcomes. Like, oh. it's, it's in the process that things are made, and and the end, it's almost like the outcome. It's just, oh, that's the cup, but all what it took that make that cup yeah. mm -hmm. is the enriching part of our life that we find. So yeah. make, make, do, make. be. And what I always say is, how long can you make without making something? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how long you can make without making something. You said something. that, mm -hmm. slowing the process, you know, stretching it out. And uh, yeah. I, I think real quick in that whole vibe was... Um, I constantly say, I mean, they're trying to make a song. I'm going to make these beats. And then I, am I forcing? Am, should I be reading a book right now or hanging out with Juniper and pull back? And I, I find if I'm inspired, I can make a beat in five minutes. Yeah. That's the, oh my gosh. Yeah. And I could take three days to try to do one if I'm trying to make one. Yeah. So slow down. Thank you for sharing that. Perfect. Less yeah. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> AM Ohm, thank you very much for uh, joining us once again. And, uh, this episode will be out on January 20th. We'll, and they will see that then. Thanks again for having me. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I enjoy you. talking with all of you. Awesome. Hey, I'm
Damn, 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 damn.